Hey, this is Manny Moonraker. Oh wow, they, they love me. They they really love me. Thank you, thank you. By the way, folks, this Saturday is International Podcast Day, and the day that the announcement comes out for the 2018 Podcast Awards. But uh, let's cue the music. This is episode number 125, and as you can see in the title, we've got something to talk about regarding NASA. And I know the, the, the majority of you guys are not fans of NASA, and sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes I hate NASA just as much as you guys do, because no fucks are given by NASA, and no fucks are given by us. But there's an article out there, and it has to do with E.T., so... We're going to take a look at that, but before I get in there, I did get some emails recently. Now, like I tell you guys, I tend to tool around or clown around on social media because that's what I like to do on my spare time. Sometimes I'll program stuff to come out at a later date, but it's all about the whole ufology situation and sometimes about the dog too, Bug the UFO Hunter. But I've got ideas, I've got thoughts, I've got conspiracies. I've also got gossip news. Uh, Well, I I can't really say gossip news because this was actually sent to me by the individual. But I went into UBR Truth Seekers and I asked some of the members a question. The question was this. Do you guys listen to the Paracast with Gene Steinberg? I've mentioned before that I do listen to other podcasts. Check. Bada bing. That is correct. Not even going to lie about that because basically that's how I started. That's how I started the whole podcasting thing. Yeah, there was a a bit of attraction to the topic as far as UFOs. Absolutely. But I started listening to other folks, their ideas, and... uh, Right from the get-go, I was never a fan of the two-hour, three-hour show talking about remote viewing. Listen, let me just put this out there so that people can understand. If your thing is talking about remote viewing that the government had a program on 40, 50 years ago, I gotta say it, but so fucking what? So, So what you proved that Five decades ago, they were doing remote viewing. How does that help you today? I mean, let's say someone came out, uh, you know, comes out and says, "Hey, here it is. Here's evidence, solid evidence. Here's the video. Here's everything." After you, you know, proudly thump on your chest and maybe have yourself a margarita or two because you've done it. You've been pretty much right the whole time. What do you do then? You can't do shit. Because it's over. It was over five decades ago. This is my problem with legacy UFO reports. So what? Yes, Roswell, neat. Aurora, fantastic. All the other ones. Phoenix Incident, hallelujah. But it's not going to help you today. It's not going to help you today. But, you know, I just just went to... I went off the rails just now, because that's not what I was talking about. I was talking about the Paracast. Because in listening to the Paracast, I signed up for their newsletter. Now, I haven't even been looking at it. You know, junk mail, it comes in, uh, you know, once or twice a week. Stuff in there from the Paracast forum, coming in constantly, blah, 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 yada, 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 bada, bing, bada, boom. Just coming in. But one of them caught my eye a couple weeks ago. It caught my eye because... Apparently, Gene is begging for money. He's falling on hard times. And I was going to come on this show today, and I was going to rake him through the coals. Because, you, honestly, if you're not uh, 
If you're not signed up to his newsletter, you have no idea what the hell he's saying. But, in the words of his uh, previous co-host, which which I'm not going to mention his name, he said in a response to other listeners that were like just hammering them, he said that basically he was tired of Gene panhandling, and that's why he left the Paracast. Now, no fucks given here, old jokes aside, I really was going to come on here today and really just hammer this thing. I mean, I was going to go on it like a genetic hammer. It just gets go to it. I was just, I was just going to be mad about it. But, you know, then I got to thinking, there, there are people out there who will tell you that God told them that they needed to go across the world. They needed to fly to every corner of the planet and spread the message of God, but they need a $15 million Learjet in order to do it. Well, shit. When you put it in that context, Gene Steinberg should go ahead and panhandle as much as he wants. Because maintaining a podcast is a personal expense, really, unless you become, you know, a big name person like Joe Rogan or something like that. That shit's coming out of your money, right? Yeah, it's coming out of your personal finances. And, you know, shell. Yeah, I keep doing it. I mean, I think Gene probably should have aimed a little higher and asked for that $10 million Learjet in order to track UFOs. And maybe he would have gotten some traction. So, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, you know, I I just can't. Uh, it is what it is. I hope the guy the best, and I hope it works out for him. And, yeah, like I said, I used to listen to the Paracast quite a lot, and as well as a lot of, a lot of uh, other shows, because they're, they're interesting. The topic is interesting, no matter what angle you take it from. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. It sounded like probing. No wonder, no matter what uh, angle you get it from, damn, that doesn't sound good either. No matter what angle they are trying to promote, whew, that was close. The topic of the paranormal, UFOs, even ghosts and ghouls and whatever, it's fascinating. And so a a podcast that's able to get so many uh, people to go on there and do interviews, even if it is for like three fucking hours, uh, they should stay around and they should uh, get the help they need from their listeners. Because there's a lot of people who do not miss a single week at all and not a single episode. And, you know, those are the people that should show up and say, hey, let me give you a helping hand. So Gene Steinberg, Paracast. I hope everything works out to get your stuff together. But I'm going to have to unsubscribe because that shit is sad as fuck. But, uh, you know, best of luck to you guys. So now let's talk about what we came here to really talk about, which was the news article that uh, is out of Fox News. Now, some of you might have seen it already, of course, because it is what it is. NASA is always big news when it comes to the mainstream media. Because they're tangible, right? I mean, they're tangible, they're real, the government pays for them. So everything they say has got to be true. The title for this article is NASA is heightening the search for alien life using techno signatures. That's right. Techno signatures. So, besides the fact that we're always hearing from NASA that there's just no way that on this planet or that planet, that any life could be there now. You know, the shit in our solar system is long thought to be dead, especially on Mars. Though a lot of people with pareidolia may disagree with that. But Mar- uh, but NASA, NASA is saying that technosignatures are the key. Now we know that there have been many projects in the past to look for radio signals, right? Hey, we've got radio any rubber dicker out there can probably put a radio signal together, and we should be able to pick it up, right? But besides the wow signal from way back when, a few decades ago, we've gotten nothing. Zero. So maybe, maybe what these uh, intrepid point dexters are thinking is that maybe it's because we're past the uh, wow situation. We're past radio signals. Maybe... What we need to look for is other signs of technology, right? Because we have other 
types of technology, don't we? I mean, look at your kids. What are they tuned into all the time? It's not the radio. Not at all. By the way, I am live right now on Spreaker.com, and I want to say hi to Marty, the host of Angling Waters Outdoors, which is a podcast that's uh, broadcasted on Spreaker. And uh, listen, you guys got to check him out. He's right there. He's in the chat right now. Say hello to Marty. Check out Angley Waters Outdoors. And uh, I believe they're on iHeartRadio as well. And, uh, you know, it's a good show if you want to learn a little bit about fishing and get out there and uh, get that fish story going. So let's get back to NASA because this is what they said. NASA says techno signatures are signs or signals which if observed would allow us to infer the existence of technological life elsewhere in the universe. They went on to say that the best known techno, techno search, uh, techno signature, what the hell techno search? I just put the shit together. I, I mean, we strive to do new things around here. He said the best known techno signature are radio signals, but there are many others that have not been explored fully. Now, some of the things that they're going to be looking for is uh, laser emissions, uh, signs of massive structures, and basically, even believe it or not, atmosphere is full of pollutants that <laughs> that might imply intelligence. Now, if your atmosphere if your atmosphere is full of crap, I don't think that's intelligence. But I guess who are we to say that a uh, jacked up atmosphere has anything to do? with being intelligent, as maybe they're too smart for themselves, kind of like we are on this planet, basically. But the thing is that we're constantly hearing from NASA that there really hasn't been any real signs of life anywhere. And if you can't definitively tell us if there's any signs of life in our own solar system, why in the world... Are you worried about what's 4.2 far? Why are you spending all that money to look for a techno signature somewhere else when you can't even identify whether or not some of these planets on some of these, uh, some of the moons on some of the planets that apparently have tons of water, whether or not there's life there? Why spend the millions of dollars trying to look elsewhere? 4.2 4.2 billion miles away, light years away, to where it'll take several generations just to even contact them people. Why don't you figure out what's happening in our solar system first, rubber dickers? Spend the money and going to with the moons of Saturn or Jupiter. Explore some of those quote unquote potential oceans and let's find out if there's life there. Because to be honest, Can't you infer, like NASA says, that if you have a planet or a moon in our own solar system that has a shitload of freaking life, can't you then infer that basically if you were to find similar planets somewhere else in your techno-signature search, that possibly, more than likely, there is life there also? It seems that... The issue here is that NASA is just looking everywhere except the easiest places to look. And sadly, I think that NASA is not the one who is going to be responsible or giving credit for finding life. I think it's going to be some kind of private enterprise, some rubber dicker like Deuce Bigelow the Space Gigolo, or someone else like Tesla's a dude, a musky, who is going to spend the money to stop fucking around with the things that are too far to reach And he's going to go somewhere close, right? Spend a little bit less money. Get your ass over to one of these moons. Dive into the ocean, right? And check it out. Chances are, with a little bit of sampling, you'll find something. Even if it's microbial life, it means a lot. Because right now, from NASA, we've got no fucks given, absolutely nothing in that regard. Instead, it's easier for them to say, no, not possible than to actually just go in and do it. Well, I mean, they'd rather spend five decades putting satellites around a quote-unquote dead planet so they can sniff 
some carbon in the air and tell us it's possible that every season something farted. And so basically we've got some uh, carbon coming up. For real? Is that what we're spending our money on? Is, is that really what it is? We're out there putting things out to smell farts in space to let us know if something is living. And let me tell you, let's be honest. If your machine is smelling farts from space on the planet below, that's a lot of fucking farting. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, don't light a match around there. But how much farting do you need to smell before you realize that something might be alive? I mean, let's extrapolate that. Let's put it on paper. Somebody break out their Texas Instrument scientific calculator and find out how many uh, farts per cubic inch does it take for you to realize that maybe something's alive. Maybe something's on the surface. Because I know that when I'm walking by Bugs a UFO Hunter and I smell that nonsense, I, I know he's alive. Trust me. And it, he might not fart with the seasons, but when he does... Everybody knows. Everybody knows he's there. But apparently when you fart on a planet that you believe is dead, nobody knows you're there. Now I know that's a long, a long crazy way of looking at it. But it's the truth. You look at all those papers regarding Mars and all the sniffing they've been doing around the planet and all this carbon they're picking up. How can you not add those together to give you to a real number. How can you not put all that into your brain and figure out that maybe we need to stop sending rovers that are just going to drill holes into rocks like they're a dentist. Maybe we need something that's actually going to go over there, scoop something up and put it under a microscope and not into a furnace to burn it up to see what comes out. They might be hope for NASA somewhere, sometime, somehow in the future, but I've got my money on the rich billionaires to really answer this question for us. Is there life in our solar system? Is there life beyond? Hell, I would go as far as to say that the whole Planet Nine situation, Nibiru, this whole uh, planets at the furthest extent of our solar system, it'll it'll probably be a rich do- uh, rubber dicker that figures that out too. Because just over the summer, they were saying that they, uh, according to their mathematical calculations, there is a significant mass way past the last planet, which used to be Pluto, but not anymore. So what does that tell you? If you know it, if it looks like it's something, if it works out mathematically to be something, then maybe it's something. Why keep dicking around? Go find it. That is the state of NASA, but thanks to someone else who decided to come here and tell them we need to look. It's probably some new manager, right? Some new manager came in. He feeling He's feeling a little fancy about himself. So he says, hey, let's look for techno signatures. So that's what they're doing. So we'll keep an eye on that because I'm sure that uh, this has to pay out in some way for them to continue getting funding. So I'm sure we're going to find techno signatures somewhere. And hopefully it's a good place for us. And it's not, you know, 10 billion light years away. If you like the podcast, listen to UFO Buster Radio wherever you can find a mobile app. Also, check us out on Facebook, UFO Buster Radio pages, Manny Moonraker uh, page. Also, uh, Instagram at Manny Moonraker, Twitter at UFO Buster Radio, and on Google Plus Plus Manny Moonraker. And lastly, like I said at the beginning, this Sunday, September 30th, is International Podcast Day. So go to those other podcasts before they start sending you emails saying that they're broke as hell. But go over there and say hello. Say, hey, what's up? Share their podcast. If you listen to a podcast about, uh, I don't know, how to deliver babies, well, go ahead. Share with your friends. You know, this is how you're going to save that random lady who's giving birth. If you listen to a podcast about how to neuter your dog, don't share it with your dog, but send it out to other people. 
Share your favorite podcast this Sunday, International Podcast Day. And sharing is caring. Let them get more people to listen to what they're saying because you enjoy it. So chances are someone you know enjoys it as well. Also, if you find International Podcast Day through social media, there is an event on Sunday. I'll try to send it out through social media uh, channels that UFO Buster Radio has so you guys can actually uh, tune in because there is an actual event and even the podcast awards will be announced uh, on that day as well. So, as always, keep your eyes to the sky. Don't forget to visit Angling Waters because uh, it's a good podcast, especially for you fishermen out there. And I'll be back next week to torture you guys with some more crazy-ass nonsense because that's what I do. And uh, I might even go out and look for techno signatures myself. So this is Manny Moorricker signing out. Sayonara. Bye-bye. Ciao.